going to do today is have a look at two or three problems involving situations where differential equations can arise and use and solve on them to solve the problem. Okay. Uh, the first one we're going to have a look at. I'd rather you didn't spend a lot of time copying this down. I'll make sure these notes go up on a website afterwards. So you've got a typed version of the question and my scribbling as well. So if you want to just write the main details down as we go along quickly, rather than write that whole question. But we're going to look at the vertical motion of an object, one that's represented by a, a differential equation, ds by dt is equal to u minus gt. This is where s is the height of the object at a time t seconds. And g, the acceleration due to gravity, is 9.81 meters per second squared. The first thing we're going to do is determine a particular solution to that equation. If the object is thrown vertically upwards with an initial velocity u of 15 meters per second, and <clears throat> is released at an initial height s of 1.2 meters. I've used s rather than h because s is the standard used for displacement of an object. Yeah? Um, 1.2 meters when t is equal to zero. So we've got some initial conditions there at the time when t is equal to zero. All right? So how are we going to start solving that problem? First bit. We've got ds by dt is equal to u minus g t. To find a particular solution, so what we we're, what we're saying here is the particular solution will, will give us S. So how do we get S from this? We need to integrate that and therefore we need to integrate that. Yeah? So if we integrate dS by dt we get S, we're, we're finding a general solution at the moment. Yeah. Integrate u. U is a constant. Integrate minus gt. Remember, the index of this is 1. What do we do when we want to integrate? Yeah, minus g. We square the t and divide by the new index. One more thing. Constant of integration. That is a general solution. Okay, we want a particular solution. How do we do that? Yeah, we substitute in the initial values given.
we substitute all of them into our equation. We so therefore 1.2 is equal to sorry no s is 1.2. Somebody standing here with a ball 1.2 meters high and throwing it up in the air. So the initial, condi the initial conditions are that S is equal to 1.2 and T is equal to 0. Not 0, it's not starting from the floor. We've got to find C. Hasn't gone anywhere. Oh, you try. I thought you'd say that's zero. No. Yeah. Because this is. 15 times 0. Minus 9.81 times 0 squared over 2 plus C. Yeah? Which I agree, so we're at slight cross purposes, uh, Jack. 1.2 is equal to zero minus zero and all that zero as well zero squared is nothing 9.81 times nothing there's nothing divide that by two you still got nothing plus c therefore c is equal to 1.2 that's the initial position of the object Yep. General solution is S is equal to fifteen T minus nine point eight one T squared over two plus one point two. And the units of that are, yep, particular. Now you include the variables, Dom, are the height, or the displacement, and time. This is a particular solution for an object that's going to be have an initial velocity of 15 meters per second. Yeah. And gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. Yeah. And then that's the constant we found, which is the starting height, because we're not starting from zero. Okay? So, general solution is for a particular case. Your for a particular case, the general solution is where we've got U, G, etc. Okay? So, if we're given different conditions, we're going to put them into that general solution and have it so one point eight seconds. So uh, B. Yep. 
So what do we have to do? Yeah, substitute T is 1.8 into our particular solution. So we do 15 times 1.8 minus 9.81 times 1.8 squared over 2 plus 1.2. And we plug that in our calculator and we get an answer. I'll let you two boys and girls. 12.3 units, Jack. Meters. Yep. So the height of that projectile after 1.8 seconds under those conditions would be 12.3 meters. C. Determine the time when the object hits the ground. How can we go about that? Yeah. C. Time when objects hits ground. This will be uh, yes, it will, because like, that's got to stop. Right? But we need you don't that doesn't mean you take fifteen out of the equation. Okay. I.e. when Zero equals we want our equation fifteen T minus nine point eight one T squared over two plus one point two. Okay, how can we solve that? What type of equation is that? Doesn't jump out as it is, but what is it? It's a quadratic. So how go, how would we normally write a general form of quad? We'd write a a x squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. Yeah? How can we write our equation so it's in that form? Yeah, let's keep it like it is. So let's say minus 9.81 over 2 squared. Just draw, I'm just drawing the t squared, sorry, away from the function. And then b will be, so it's going to be plus 15t. And then plus 1.2 on the end is equal to zero. So we've got our quadratic equation form there. That's a, that's b, and that's C. And they're equated to zero. So how do we solve quadratic equation? Yeah, we could use, if it's easy, we could use factorization. But in this case, it's not going to be easy to factorize minus 9.81 over 2. So we use the quadratic formula. which will be in the formula C, by the way.
uh, we can go uh, t is equal to minus 15 plus or minus the square root of minus uh, uh, sorry 15 squared minus 4 times minus 9.81 over 2 times 1.2 and all that is over 2a 2 times minus 9.81 over 2 is minus 9.81 That, what I then like to do is find out the bit, what the bit inside the square root is worth in total, and divide that by minus 9.81. How many solutions might we expect? How many values of t might we expect? Yeah, it is, but if you do... 2 times 9.81 divided by 2, you end up with 9.81, don't you? You multiply by 2 and divide by 2. Yeah. In general, though, we could get 1, 2, or no real solutions. Here we would expect to get, we're going to get two solutions. But what's the bit in, in under the square root worth? Three point zero nine. Everyone else agree with that? You don't. So that's fifteen minus fifteen plus or minus. The root of 248.5 divided by 9.81. Therefore, t is equal to. I'll concur with that. So we've got two solutions to this. t is equal to minus 0 0.078, and t is equal to 20 seconds. Negative values of time. I think 24.1 is high. Hang on. 3.14 seconds. The three significant figures. Now, in this particular problem, or any problem involving time, negative time is not generally useful to us. So we'd throw that solution away. Um, therefore, object, pitch ground, Three point one four seconds. Right. Last part of the question. Page, I think. Sketch this is D displacement versus find So we've got two axes. S and T. That's in seconds. It's displacement in minutes.
pound again after 3.41 seconds. What? That graph parabola. A parabola. After what if after every, the height or every half a second would you like that over time we had it come and then down again to it over there up height that's what we So, how can we, how will that help us visualize maximum height? Here, we're interested in. Yep, we could, if we put, which we'll probably in a minute. How could we do it mathematically? No, not necessarily half the time, is it? Because it's starting at two meters. But that's a good thought. If if we start two and went back to zero, then if you found the height at half the time, But all other facts, I mean, ignoring things like and assumption, zoom, and how that can. gives us a slope of that line. Maximum height. So we the S by at maximum height. It's that top point. It's rate of change of height is zero. It's not going up and it's not coming down for that split second at the top. Straight to that, we're in. So, what we can do is let d by dt equal zero. And solve. So we go uh, u minus gt is equal to zero. That was our original um, equation, wasn't it? Yeah. To put our value in, 15 minus 9.81 t is equal to fifth. Yeah. Where where have you gone with that? As we if we can say 9.81 t is equal to 15. 
F T of a 9.81 equals so it's not quite half is it yeah because it started at a certain height yeah therefore Maximum height equals max equals fifteen times one point five two minus nine point eight one times minus one point sorry one point five two squared over two plus one point two. So we put the value um, t is equal to one point five two in our particular section. Put that there, put t one point five two seconds in particular solution. Twelve point six seven meters. Okay. And the ten point the distance that we got early, the second part of the question, height of the object after one must actually be on the way down. Got for um the maximum the one point eight seconds. Yeah, the height is ten meters, but it's, it's so if we if we graph that function, we would get what we expected the parabola. We can see the maximum height is 2.7 meters. It hits the ground after 3.14 seconds, and after 1.8 seconds, the height is 12.1 meters. Yep. Okay. What we got now is a second order differential equation problem. So. Find Kirchhoff's law to 